What do double integrals mean? Why is it that simply doing one derivative and then another integrates a function over an area? If you're just learning double integrals, understanding the answers to these questions will help you know how to apply the method of double integrals to real life problems. If you're a veteran of mathematics and you know how to take double integrals, this video is also for you. You can treat this video as a challenge to see if you understand how they actually work. And by the end of this video, we're going to understand a deeper point about how and why it is important to prove mathematical methods to yourself. All of that is coming up here on Inductica. <laughs> First off, what is a double integral? In class, you may have been introduced to them with a problem like this. To solve it, you just do the x integral while holding y constant, then you do the y integral. But what does that all actually mean? What's its connection to reality? First, the integrand, the stuff inside the integral, is what we call a scalar field. A scalar field assigns a value to different points in space. It's a field of numbers at different locations. Now, these values could, in principle, represent many different things. But let's think of it representing heights. Each of these numbers represents a different height. This scalar field as a whole would then represent altitudes at different positions, perhaps along a mountain. The center of this scalar field would refer to the top of the mountain. Notice it has the highest value. The edges would represent the area around the mountain. Notice how those values are zero. And the regions in between would represent the height in these locations you might end up where you're climbing the mountain. Now, alternatively, a scalar field can refer to something else. Perhaps this two-dimensional area is a cornfield, and the scalar field, the numbers, represent the density of corn. Perhaps it represents how many ears of corn there are per square meter at each location. A scalar field is represented by a function, just like the function inside of our integral. This function could represent the corn density at each location by plugging in the ordered pair for each position into the function. So for example, at the position 1, 2, the corn density would be 2. And you can see that we get that by just plugging it into the function. At the position 2, 1, the corn density would be 4. So now we know what the integrand could represent physically. But what does the integral as a whole represent physically? To understand that, let's first remember how a one-dimensional integral works. With a regular one-dimensional integral, you're adding up lots of little pieces, each of which have a certain height given by the function, and each of those pieces has a super small width of dx. So adding all of these pieces together gives you an area. And it turns out that finding that area is the same as taking the opposite of a derivative. Now, if you don't know why that is, then I've linked to part of a video that will explain why that is and explains it just as well as I could. Now, to understand a two-dimensional integral over a scalar field, instead think of a mountain range interpretation of the scalar function. The value of this function, or scalar field at each point would represent the height of the mountain at each location. And so by multiplying the height of the mountain at each location by the little square dx times dy, that actually gives a volume. So the integral adds up all these little volumes to find the whole volume of the mountain above the xy plane. Alternatively, if our scalar field or function in this integral represents a corn density, then this integral would be adding up the quantity of corn at each tiny square of the field. Corn ears per square meter multiplied by square meters equals ears of corn. The integral finds the amount of corn at each tiny location inside the region, then adds up all those amounts to find the total amount of corn in the region of integration. Now, as you probably already know, when you do a double integral like this, it's actually really straightforward to solve. You just do the x antiderivative, treating x as constant, plug in the bounds, then do the y integral. But why is it that simple? We're adding up lots of pieces in two dimensions. So why would that process be just as simple as just doing an x integral than doing a y integral? Just because someone told you this would work and just because it feels easy and intuitive, doesn't mean you actually understand it. 
To understand how this actually works, let's think of a physical situation that the x integral could actually represent. So let's imagine a bunch of tiny harvesters driving along different lines in the x direction, each of them scooping up corn as they go and depositing that corn into a linear pile on this side of the rectangle. As each of these tractors drive, they pick up a constantly changing amount of corn. That quantity of corn is determined by the function x squared times y, as well as the location along each part of their journey as they drive. Each tractor picks up corn from x equals zero all the way to x equals four. The quantity that they pick up is changing with x squared. This is represented by an integral in the x direction. Now, in contrast, the y part of this integrand represents the fact that each tractor has a different y location and will thus pick up different amounts of corn depending on its y location as it makes its journey. This integral over the x direction represents the fact that each of these tractors, each at a different y position, is picking up corn from zero to four. Once that integral is evaluated in the x direction, it looks like this. And we are now left with an integral which is only in the y. This y integrand that is left represents the quantity of corn at each location along that final line. This final integral in just the y is the same as imagining a harvester scooping up corn into its hopper at different y locations as it drives down the line. Each bit of this line, dy, bringing with it a different amount of corn depending on the integrand. This is the same as a regular one-dimensional integral. Only instead of adding up little bits of area per length dx, we're actually adding up little bits of corn for each length dy. And as you can see here, we get an actual number for the answer, which represents the total number of ears of corn in the field after we add all the little bits of density up. Let's understand this now with a different example and with another kind of physical meaning. Let's say you were given a problem problem like this. Textbooks often give problems like this. Integrate the function x times y over the region bounded by the functions square root of x and x squared. First, try to understand what this could mean physically. Remember, as you're doing these problems, make it physical. First of all, what do they even mean by the region bounded by square root of x and x squared? To understand this, graph both of these functions, then spot the region between them. Now, the way the book does it, or the way a professor will typically do it, is that they will say, you simply set up an integral like this, where you integrate from x squared to the square root of x. <laughs> like, those are the bounds, but come on, you don't actually understand what the heck that means right? You may have some vague sense or vague image in your head about moving from this curve to that curve, but you don't have any actual evidence that that's, that, that exactly works out mathematically. You've just been accepting it because it feels right to you. Now that's not proper reasoning to just accept things because they're easy and that they feel right to you. So we're gonna answer this question, what does it really mean to have functions as the bounds of an integral? So to understand this, let's choose a different physical meaning. Let's imagine that the region is a pile of cocaine. Each part of the pile will have different cocaine heights at different locations, which are given by the function x times y. Since the density is proportional to both x and y, the cocaine height gets higher as we move from the lower left end of the pile to the upper right edge of the pile. To visualize the meaning of the first integral, the y integral, imagine taking a razor blade and moving it across the mound of cocaine in the y direction, pushing it into a line. Once this y integral is completed, the x integral is equivalent to taking up your rolled up $100 bill and snorting the cocaine in that line. Each bit of that line having a different amount of cocaine in it, depending on how much cocaine was pushed up into it during each stage of the movement of the razor blade. So let's understand that process in more detail as it relates to the actual mathematical methods of integration. As the razor blade moves across the y direction, each part of the blade will pick up and push different amounts of cocaine which are given by the function x times y. This is represented by the first integral in the y direction. Now this x part of the integral represents the fact that each bit of the razor, 
each with a different X location, will pick up cocaine along a different line as it moves in the Y direction. Each of these different paths of cocaine pushing over Y result in a different amount of cocaine in the snorting line, which depends on X. And of course, the snorting across that line is going to be represented by an integral just in the X. But let's back up for a second. What's up with these bounds of integration, which are functions of X? Here's the physical meaning. As the razor blade moves in the Y direction, it doesn't necessarily start scooping up cocaine immediately. Different parts of the blade start picking up coke at different parts of the journey. So for example, the Y position at which the razor blade starts scooping up cocaine depends on the X position of each part of the razor. And that dependence is X squared. For example, at X equals one half, the middle of the blade, the blade begins picking up coke at Y equals one fourth. In contrast, at X equals three fourths, further down the blade, that part of the blade begins picking up coke at nine 16 You can see in the drawing, it's a little more than one half. The way this is represented in the whole is by saying that the integral starts at X squared. It starts at different Y values depending on the different X positions of the different parts of the blade. The same kind of reasoning applies to when the blade stops picking up cocaine. And so the upper bound of the integral is the square root of X. So for example, in this picture, we see that the part of the blade that lies at x equals one fourth stops picking up cocaine at y equals one half. So once again, as the razor is dragged up, it starts scooping up cocaine at different Y positions, depending on which X position we are talking about. It starts scooping up cocaine at positions along X squared, and it stops scooping at positions along the square root of X. This is equivalent to evaluating this y integral. This leaves us with an integral in just x, which represents our nice, neat little line of cocaine with a density which depends just on x. It has different amounts of cocaine at different x locations. Finally, once all of this booger sugar is in a nice, neat line, we'll find the total amount by doing an integral over that line in the x. This is equivalent to the $100 bill snorting up each bit of cocaine as it moves along the line. Each part of that line having a different amount of cocaine in proportion to this integrand. This integral goes from zero to one. Since we know that these two curves intersect at zero and at one, which means that the razor blade that swept up cocaine to begin with had to be just one unit long, producing a line of cocaine that's one unit long. Now, I know that you're all big boys and girls, so I'm sure you can do this single integral on your own and find the answer. Once you do, you will get a number, not a variable. If you got a variable, it means you did it wrong. Once you get that number, it represents the total amount of cocaine in that distributed pile. Notice that to set this integral up with these bounds, you got to do the y integral first. If you do the x integral first, plugging in these functions as the bounds just messes everything up. Notice that if we do this, the integral doesn't get a number for the final answer. It gets this weird function of x, and basically you just won't get an answer. More importantly, this integral just doesn't make sense. There's no physical story that you could tell that it would actually represent. So you can see that telling a physical story of what these bounds actually mean is what keeps us on track, realizing that for the razor blade to scrape from x squared to square root of x, it has to scrape along the y direction. If you don't have a physical story in your head, about how the integral actually works, it's gonna be hard to get details like this right. And your resulting integral will be meaningless. So remember to make it physical. That's what I tell the ladies. Let's make this physical. Do you like the way I explain things? Do you like actually understanding math and physics instead of training yourself like a monkey to repeat steps on a test? Well, then you're in luck. Just go to inductica.com slash contact and you can set up one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions with me personally. All right, back to the video.
As our final example, let's take the following problem. Integrate the function sine of x over the region bounded by y equals square root of x, y equals square of x minus 2, and the x-axis. Okay, let's start by graphing these two curves. Now, when you do this, you got to at least graph this on paper in order to find the region. Now, the region we're talking about is this one. A quick tip for making sure you're picking out the right region, make sure you're picking out a region that's bounded by all of the curves that they're telling you about. So in our case, it's three different curves. This region, for example, is only bounded by square root of x and the square of x minus two. It is not bounded by the x-axis. So make sure you pick the region that's actually bounded by all three of the curves that they gave you. So if you don't set up a physical story, you might be tempted to integrate from y equals square root of x to y equals square of x minus two, just like last time. And you'll find out that this doesn't make any sense. So think about what this would mean physically using another cocaine story. Notice that if we integrate in the y first, the razor blade sweeping up the cocaine starts at y equals zero. It doesn't start at the square root of x. Now further, ask yourself this, when does the razor blade stop sweeping up cocaine? Well, on the left side, it actually stops sweeping up at different positions depending on this curve. In contrast, on the right side of the pile, it stops sweeping up cocaine at different positions depending on this other curve. So it turns out there's actually two valid ways to do this. First, you can break the region into two pieces, a left side and a right side. On the left side, the cocaine is swept up from y equals zero to y equals square root of x. On the right side, the cocaine is swept up from y equals zero to y equals the square of x minus two. The second way is actually to take an x integral first, but this is gonna involve a trick. If we do this, we only have to do one integral instead of two integrals. If we do it this way, then we imagine pushing our razor blade from left to right. It would start picking up cocaine along the curve on the left, and it would stop picking up cocaine along the curve on the right. So would you set up the integral like this? No. The problem with this integral is you'll quickly find out it doesn't make any sense. It's not going to yield a number as the final answer. To solve this problem, we're going to have to remind ourselves what the bounds of integration actually mean in detail for the different parts of that razor. This, of course, can only be done by physically visualizing what's going on. As the razor blade sweeps in the x direction, the bounds tell us which location it starts picking up cocaine. This is going to be different for different y locations along the blade. So the bottom of the blade, y equals zero, is actually going to start picking up cocaine immediately, as you can see in the diagram. In contrast, in the middle of the blade, y equals one half, it will not start picking up cocaine until x equals one fourth. The bounds of this x integral therefore must be written in terms of y. And why is that? Well, because different Y locations along the razor will start and end in picking up cocaine at different locations. So here, I will quickly use algebra to change these two curves to be X in terms of Y instead of Y in terms of X. So the integral, once you do all that algebra, the integral ends up looking like this. Notice that the setup for these integrals is the hard part. Actually doing them is easy, and I'll leave those up to you. So make sure sure you keep this image in your head that the first integral is like sweeping the cocaine into a line and the second integral is like snorting up that line. If you visualize all of the details of that process and give them mathematical interpretation, that will help you set up every detail of the integral. So here are some take home lessons. First, in order to understand how to set up a double integral, you've got to tell some kind of physical story. Whether that story involves adding up little bits of mountain, or harvesting corn in lines, or sweeping up cocaine with a razor blade and then snorting the resulting line. Secondly, I've explained double integrals as an example of the fact that in order to actually understand how to use a mathematical method properly, you must understand how that method works. You need to understand its proof. 
Notice that our calculations went haywire every time we tried to make the calculation without thinking of it in terms of some kind of physical story that justified that mathematical calculation method. Now, proving a mathematical method does not necessarily mean that you look for some deduction from a textbook. It means that you look at what the mathematical method actually means in detail and confirm for yourself that it must work. I teach a method of doing this, of checking to see exactly how mathematical methods work. I teach a method of doing this in my playlist, Inductive Proofs of Math and Physics. And that playlist can be found in the description. In that series, I reprove all of the essentials of math and physics from the beginning in a possible order of discovery. And once you see a few of these videos, I'm confident that you'll conclude that this inductive method can give us a much better understanding of all the ideas of math and science once applied consistently. So thank you for watching, and I hope you will join me on that inductive journey.